Hello and welcome to SIY Sew It Yourself. I'm your host, Stephanie Seving from Quilt Addicts Anonymous, and today we've got a really cool project for you. We are going to be making a double skirt full apron with adorable patch pockets. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, an apron can be an heirloom sewing project. It's also a really fun sewing project that can teach you a lot of skills, but I've got an apron that my mom gave me that my grandmother hand smocked using gingham and and that is my cherished apron. And it comes out for the special occasions. I've made my mom an apron and she uses it all the time. Every Christmas when she's baking cookies, that apron comes out because it matches her kitchen. So this is absolutely something that you can make and use for many years for yourself or for family members as gifts. And it can be passed down and cherished from generation to generation as well. So, and this is a great pattern to do it with because it is a little fancy. We are going to have a double skirt. It's going to be gathered so that way we have the nice little flounce and we can feel all um, fancy in our kitchens while we're making fun meals. And it just has a lot of really great details that both are going to challenge us as sewers and then also elevate it to that next level of just, you know, prettiness and having fun in your kitchen and at your sewing machine. Here's some of the skills we're gonna learn in today's tutorial. We're gonna learn the basics of using interfacing, machine gathering, placing patch pockets, how to create a waistband with ties, and much more. Now the fabrics, you can use up to six fabrics in this pattern. We're using five in the example that we are using here in the example of today's class, but we also have some kits available that you can get from SIY participating retailers. Make sure you visit SIYSewItYourself.com for a list of participating retailers where you can get the pattern and the fabrics that you see in today's video. You have can look for quilt shops that are close to you as well as online retailers, and you also can get the pattern from sewforhome.com. They're the ones who came up with this lovely, pretty apron that we're gonna be working with today. Now, before we get into it, I just wanna show you the lovely fabrics because Jaftex is the sponsor of Sew It Yourself, and it's their company's fabrics that we're using and that you can get kits from. So a great way to say thanks for this tutorial and the pattern is to make sure that when you're shopping for supplies that you support them so they can keep bringing you more great ideas of things to challenge you and have some fun in your sewing room. So first up, we're gonna take a look at the apron that we're gonna be making in today's video. This fabric is from Studio E and it's called Dark Forest. And we also use a little bit of the peppered cotton here for some accent pieces. It is really gorgeous, really pretty. If you have anybody who really likes woodland, maybe they have a cabin up north somewhere, this would be a great one to go with because it is really fun. We have all the wooded, leaves and flowers and the colors are just really reminiscent of that we've got some and I, this is so fun there is a full lining on this one so we have our fern lining we've got some mushrooms here a nice stripe that looks great and our different phases of the moon here. And also we have lining on the back of that as well. It really is just a gorgeous example of an apron. Let's take a look at a couple of the ones behind me and then we can get going on this project. This fabric collection is Fall Potpourri from Henry Glass and it is just gorgeous. One of our Quilt at Anonymous team members took a look at this and said that is the ultimate Thanksgiving hostess gift because it is so gorgeous. It's got these metallic leaves. We have metallic swirlies for our sashing, some more metallic flowers up here, and then some gold metallic for our um, accents on the pockets and I think this is what makes it and what makes me personally love it is we have this uh, almost gingham check with metallic and this is what my apron that came from my great grandma looks like. So I just love this one. To me, this just brings back great memories of cooking with family. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. And like our shipper, I think that this too would make an ultimate Thanksgiving hostess gift. This collection is Bonjour Paris from Free Spirit Fabrics. And it is so cute and fun and flirty. It is so adorable. I think this would make a great gift for anybody getting married. Um, as part of their bridal shower gift because it's fun, it's flirty, it's young, and it 
just absolutely adorable. I would have loved to cook my first Thanksgiving meal as a married woman in an apron like this one. We've got French girls going out shopping and doing all the things, walking their little poodles. And then there's some French words um, in the pink for the sashing here. We've got some lovely yellow floral with a, with a bicycle. And then we have all the windows of Paris looking out with, of course, little flowers on the side. And then we have actual Bonjour Paris with Eiffel Towers and a nice gray back here. And isn't this just lovely? Look at that lining. It is absolutely gorgeous and just makes the whole thing. You really cannot go wrong. No matter which apron pattern you choose, they're all adorable. And I bet you there's somebody in your life that would love one of these. So check it out. Make sure you go to siysewityourself.com. Find a SIY retailer near you. And if there isn't one, make sure to order from an online retailer and grab yourself a kit. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So when you're making the apron, changing up the fabrics is gonna absolutely change up the look of the entire piece. So you can make this a couple of times. So you can have maybe seasonal aprons or just one in different colors. If you decide to change up your kitchen scheme, there's so many possibilities. But if you get one of the kits from an SIY retailer, the first thing you're going to wanna to do is make sure you're separating the fabric so you know what part of the fabric is going to correspond with which number piece. So I did this when I first got started. I had my you know, map from the Jaftex family of where everything was supposed to go. And I really like to use blank address labels. You can get these from the office supply store. And I just write down the number first of the fabric and, the, and sort that through so I know what's going where. And then as I'm cutting the pieces, I also am writing the number of what piece it is on there and I'm replacing that. That way I'm all organized from the start. Nothing's gonna end up where it's not supposed to be. And you don't have to constantly be second guessing yourself or referring back to pattern notes. There's just a sticker on your fabric that'll go away later. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to cut your fabric. So this is going to be for piece one. I have piece one marked on here because I know that this is the fabric we're using for it. Others of them, you know, maybe if they went for multiple pieces, I would have written all the pieces that they go to on here. So I know what I'm supposed to be cutting from it. Now this one, and you'll want to do this anytime you have directional fabric or anything that has like a straight line in it. You want to make sure that when you cut it, that it is going to look straight when it is on the final product. So for example, this one here is going to be our bib front. So we want to make sure that this line here that those circles are straight across. Because if they're not straight across, when we put it together, it's always gonna look crooked and you do not want the girls to look crooked. Nobody wants that. So I'm gonna show you how to line that up so that way you can cut your pieces out. It's like fussy cutting, but not quite as intense. But you certainly could fussy cut if you want to. We've got other SIY videos that go through that. Check out our patchwork pillow. We go through it in depth there. Um, but I'm just gonna show you how you can line everything up if you have something that looks like a straight line like this. All right, so if we're just looking to how this was cut when it was sent to me, you can see that they cut to a specific yardage mount, but that was not super even with where these circles are ending. But I want those circles to be nice and straight across the bottom, again, so it looks nice at the bottom of that bib. So what I'm going to do is I'm lining my ruler up and getting that edge nice and even with the bottom of every single circle. Then I can just go ahead and slice that off. Slide it down and continue going straight up like that. So I'm gonna, in this case, line it up. I've got my ruler a little bit in line down here so that way I can tell that I'm still in line with what I've already cut. And then I'm gonna make any adjustments needed up higher to make sure, again, that I'm still just slicing right at the bottom of that circle. So this is obviously not a lot to come off, but now we have a nice, great flat surface to work with. So that way, when this is laying across our, our bosoms, it's gonna be nice and straight. Everything is gonna look good. You won't start off looking crooked from the start. So anytime you have anything that's directional or have lines in it, this is what you wanna do. You're gonna cut it one width at a time to get it nice and straight all the way across. 
then you can start cutting out your pieces. So this pattern, which is available for free from an SIY retailer, which you can locate at siysewityourself.com or at sewforhome.com, you can see and get this pattern. And this is really great because they do list out exactly what you need of which piece, but they also have a graphic design of all the pieces that you're going to use and it has their measurements on there. So if you want, you can just check this off as you're going to make sure that you get everything. Right now I'm gonna cut my bib, which is 12 by nine and a half. Again, if this is directional, the 12 is going to be this way. So you want it to be going up and down across the nine and a half inch part. All right, so I'm taking my edge that I just trimmed down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my salvages together at the bottom here. And then I'm gonna get all my edges lined up and that will be good enough to be able to just slice straight across so you don't have to worry about cutting the single width and we can use our mats to measure. So what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the edge of that fabric with a zero inch line on my mat and then I'm going to line, and this is super important, that fold up with the one inch line. And as long as we're square at our one inch and at our zero, then we will have a nice straight cut as we cut across. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut at nine and a half where I can just lay my ruler down so that it's even with nine and a half on the mat, both at the top and at the bottom. And I know because I've got everything lined up at the zero that I'm gonna have a straight nine and a half inch cut without having to have a special ruler. And because we took the time to square everything up, my circles are nice and straight across as well. So we're gonna have a really nice piece to work with here. So now I'm gonna unfold this and I'm gonna use a mat to measure again. This time I've got my salvage edge hanging past the mat and just the top edge with any inch line is fine. So now we're gonna cut it at the zero and the 12 inch mark so that we can create that nine and a half by 12 piece. Now your apron is going to come with two pattern templates. They're included in your pattern. And we talked about this in our last SIY video where we did the reusable grocery tote that you wanna make sure you are choosing the 100% scale when you're printing these. If you choose the fit setting, your pattern is likely going to turn out too small. But the best way to make sure that you've done it correctly is there's this line here that says confirm your printer output is accurate. This bar is exactly six inches long. So what you wanna do is just take your ruler, line it up, and if it is exactly six inches long, then you did that correctly. And if not, then you just need to adjust your scale back to 100%. If you're having trouble, a copy shop or a library is always able to help you with that step. So this is a bib trim. We're gonna use that a little bit later, but I've already cut out my apron bib template, which is what we're gonna use to create the angles that are gonna be on that apron bin. So what I'm gonna do first is just fold these guys right sides together. And you could pin this, I typically do not. Um, you also could use pattern weights, I typically do not. Uh, what I like to do is on this fold here, so we have our two sides here, is I'm just going to place on the fold line, it'll say to do that on your pattern. We'll just get that in place. And then we're able to just slice right off and create that angle. So I just line my ruler up with that edge and then I can give it a slice. Now we've got our apron bib ready to go. You're gonna do this with lining as well. Lining doesn't matter as much if it's perfectly straight, but definitely take some extra time to make sure that if you have anything that might look crooked, like this would definitely look crooked if we didn't take the time to square that up to the print, then make sure you're doing that. All right, so let's get sewing now that we know how to cut everything. So for this first section, we're going to need our bib front in both the part that's going to be facing out and the lining, plus our trim, which is gonna go on top. What we're going to do for each of these is we're gonna lay these right sides together, matching those long ends on the top of your apron and the bottom of your trim. And we're gonna sew this with a half inch seam allowance. Now, if you're coming from the quilting world, that might be a little strange. I'm gonna show you how to find it on your sewing machine. 
So every machine has these marks on them. And when you have your fabric lined up with them, you're going to sew that seam allowance when your needle is in its center position. So for example, right here, we have five eighths. So the easiest way to figure out where your half inch is on your machine is to take a needle or your, your ruler and just put it right underneath where the mark is. So here we have, we are at that center line is lined up right under my needle. And then using my hand roller, I like to lower that down just so I know exactly where we're at. So I can see really clearly that when my needle is in the center position, if I have my fabric lined up with this five eighths inch mark, that I'm going to sew a half inch seam allowance. So go ahead and take some time to do this on your own sewing machine so you know where everything is supposed to go so that everything turns out the correct size in the end. So now I'm gonna take my pieces and you absolutely can pin this if you want. You can pin at the top, the bottom, and the middle. I'm just gonna go ahead and give these a little stitch across. I think we're gonna be nice and good. It's not a huge long seam. Sometimes I get asked why I keep my hand back here. I'm not pulling the fabric. I'm just helping make sure it stays nice and straight as I am sewing through there. But you definitely don't wanna be tugging on your fabric because that'll stretch everything all out of place. All right, so now I'm gonna set that seam and that just consists of running your iron over it. It helps the threads kind of lay flat with the fabric that you just sewn and just provides overall better results when you're all done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a press as well. And good quality checkpoint, you wanna make sure that your angle is going straight up because this should be kind of a nice straight line. Obviously it's not straight up and down, but it should be a straight angled line going from your bib piece to your trim piece. Now with your iron fully on that apron front, you're gonna to want to drag up. That is going to allow you to press that seam underneath and not have any gaps or bumps or anything that will make it not turn out the size that it should be. What last thing you wanna do is just kinda of like plop it on top of there because then you can press pleats in. It's just not a great idea. I'm gonna do that for the front as well. All right, now for our front piece only, we need to apply some interfacing. So what I like to do is you always want to iron with the interfacing um, underneath your fabric, but we're gonna wanna place it first with the interfacing this way. I really like using woven interfacing because it is fabric with fusible attached to it, so it behaves really well. And that's what I'm using here. Now you should have a half inch open both on your top and your bottom. That's gonna help your seam allowances not be so bulky, but it should go all the way out to the sides like we see here. So this is looking really good. Um, everything's nice and centered, but I don't wanna iron it on at this point because just in case you accidentally flipped it the wrong way and you have the interfacing facing up at this point, it's a lot easier to get it off of your ironing surface than it is to get it off of your iron. So what I'm gonna do here is flip this so that the right side of my fabric is up. So that way you should have your fabric with right side up, the bumpy or fusible glue of your interfacing facing up, and the correct side that does not have any glue facing down. So now I'm just going to fuse this. You're gonna to wanna to follow your own instructions that came with your fusible interfacing, but for most of them, you're just gonna hold your iron in place for a few seconds and gradually move around the piece till it is all stuck together. What I like to do is kind of start in the middle like this and then work my way out, just kind of going back and forth. This is not like an iron all over stage, although I do, I'll do that once I have everything fused, just as one final like heat press. But you are just gently moving it in a methodical way to make sure you're hitting every piece. And what the interfacing is going to do, if you haven't used it before, is it's gonna stiffen your fabric slightly and give it more body, which is going to make it retain its shape longer, make it more durable, which is exactly what we want from a kitchen apron, because let's face it, that those can take a little bit of abuse. Okay, so what I'm gonna do before I go any further is I'm gonna flip it over, and you usually can tell really easily if something hasn't fused, there'll be like bubbles of fabric coming up where it just hasn't attached. And this is all 
really good. Like when I'm kind of picking and scratching at this, it is all behaving as one piece, which is what you want to see. All right, so now we're gonna layer these right sides together and we're gonna pin across the top and sew it again with a half inch seam. And because we were a half inch away from where that interfacing was, that's gonna give you a pretty good guide of where your seam should be. Whenever I'm doing nice straight seams like this, I really am just gonna pin at the corners and the center and that is more than good enough to keep everything together. But if you feel like you need more pins, then use more pins. All right, so now we're gonna take this and flip it right sides together and we're gonna press this top seam so that it is flat across. And that should be really nice and crisp because of the interfacing in there. So that will be make it real nice and stiff up top. And you kind of want to look from the top here because if there's any kind of roll where those seams are coming together, you want it to be going toward the lining side of the apron so that you just see the nice front from the front of it. And I don't like to put water in my iron. Every one I've ever put water in is eventually spit nasty gunk out of it. So what I do instead is I keep water in a spray mister and I'll just hit that and then I go over it with an iron. So you get the effect of steam with that nice crisp finish without having to risk your iron getting nasty over time. Now you can have a lot of fun with your thread stash here because the next thing we're going to do is top stitch along this lining. So I'm gonna switch out my thread so that way I have it matching with what we have here. So we're just gonna to top stitch real close to the edge here just to make sure that these layers are held together, they stay nice and stiff and add a little bit of decorative flair to it as well. Now when I top stitch, I like to set my machine to move as far over to the side as I can with that needle. That way I can keep the edge even with the edge of my presser foot like I'm used to doing with sewing, but I have a line to follow and I'm really close and within that same allowance. I also wanna increase my stitch length to about a 3.0 because it doesn't need to be a tight piecing stitch. It just needs to hold it together and look pretty. So as I'm sewing, I'm really making sure to keep the edge of that seam even with the edge of my presser foot so I can have a nice even stitch appearance. There also are edge stitching feet that you can get or you could use a quarter inch stitch that has a guide on it. All of those things can help you keep where you should need to be. Well, that is looking pretty cute and coordinated. We are done with the apron bib for now, so we can set it aside until we're ready to do some steps in a little bit. Next, we're going to move on to our pockets. So for your pocket, you should have two piece tens and two um, of your main fabric and of your lining. And what we're gonna start doing is we're going to put our, and like I said, I got everything nice and labeled so I know where everything is. We're gonna place interfacing on the wrong side of our outer pockets. One tip is to always give everything a really good press right before you fuse it to interfacing because if you fuse wrinkles in, you're gonna have to remove that interfacing in order to get them out. So it's best to just start with nice flat pieces. So just like with that bib front, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by centering my interfacing on the back of the pocket front, making sure that I've got about a half inch going all around. And that bumpy fusible side should be facing the wrong side of your fabric. Then I'm gonna grab it and keeping everything all in place, flip everything so that the right side of the fabric is up. That way, if you screw anything up, you have not fused it to your iron because that's bad news. Now following your manufacturer's instructions, go ahead and fuse that interfacing to the fabric. Once you think you have it all fused, just go ahead and flip that over, give it a double check. If you see any sort of bubbles in the interfacing, it means it probably hasn't fused there. You also can kind of scratch at it with your hands and if anything comes away, then you know you haven't quite fused it. This is looking pretty good though. All right, now we're gonna take and we are gonna layer everything right sides together with our pocket lining. And we're gonna pin around these edges and stitch all the way around. We wanna make sure that we leave about a three inch opening at the bottom of the pocket though, so we can turn everything right sides out. Here's a quick tip so that you don't accidentally sew too far when you are leaving room to turn is to put two pins about three inches apart along the bottom edge. 
That way you can start at one edge, so all the way around, and when you hit that second pin, you know you need to stop, backstitch, and leave it open for turning. Now I sew my yellow thread in because it's gonna match that pocket lining, but I definitely want to turn my sewing machine back to that regular stitch so that it's dead center and with my regular stitch length. That way I have that half inch seam allowance again and I have my regular stitch length back. All right, so starting at that pin that I marked, I'm gonna sew about three stitches forward and three back to reinforce that stitch. That way when I'm turning everything right sides out, I'm not gonna have to worry about accidentally ripping those stitches back because that's no fun. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and sew our half inch seam allowance around the entirety of the pocket. It should be right next to where that interfacing is. Coming up to that second pin, so I'm gonna sew up to it and then do my back stitching forward and back to secure those threads. And since we have two pockets, we gotta do everything again. Now we need to clip our corners so that way we're gonna be able to get nice sharp points at the edge. So what you wanna do is you just wanna clip straight across kind of getting a right angle off that corner. You just wanna be really careful that you do not clip through your stitching lines because then you will not have a corner, you will have a hole. So we wanna make sure that you are not doing that. So now we're gonna turn this right side out and this is where that extra stitching at the beginning and end to secure the fabrics is really gonna help you out because if you accidentally get a little overzealous at this point, you're not gonna rip out stitches. Now what we're focusing on here is getting our corners nice and turned out so that we have sharp 90 degree angles. What I do is I start by just poking that out with my finger. Then we're gonna take a tool, a, I often use like a mechanical pencil for this with the lead inside or a knitting needle works or they actually make corner turners which have pointy ends that you can stick in there as well. I'm gonna go find a mechanical pencil and that'll do the job for me here. I'm all about using the tools you have on hand if you can. So I'm just gonna push that pencil lead back in and I'm just going to take and kind of push out that corner and we got it nice and pointy now. So we're gonna have a nice sharp corner. We're gonna repeat that for all the others before we press. All right, now you've got your opening here. And what I like to do is just kind of put my fingers in and our ends are gonna kind of curve in. So I'm gonna take that and just kind of press that nice and flat. And I've got nice sharp corners here and I'm going to give it a spritz with my spray mister and then give this a really good press to get everything nice and flat and pointy on those corners. So we're ready to set our pockets aside and don't worry about this open edge. We are gonna grab that and when we attach it to the skirt front panel. So you don't have to worry about that just yet. For now, we can just go to the side. All right, so now we're gonna be working on making hems that are going on the side and the bottom of our underskirt. This piece is not lined. So from the back, you're just going to see the plain fabric. But what we're gonna do is a nice little double fold hem to turn everything under so that we have a nice neat looking edge. I'm gonna show you how to do that here. Now, if you have a directional fabric, make sure that the hem you are not going to be turning under or the side you're not turning under is the top of the fabric. So if you have like heads of things, like that's the side you're not going to be doing anything on. This fabric, it really, there's nothing that you have to worry about. All right, so this is a double fold hem technique. I'm going to fold over a quarter inch and I have quilted for so many years that I'm gonna eyeball this quarter inch because I think I got it down by now. Once you get that first one down and do be careful because the iron can make the fabric a little hot, you don't want to send your fingertips. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it over again so that this raw edge is now tucked under in that fold. And so we just have a, still a little quarter inch that's just turned to the back that's visible, but you're gonna be taking up a half inch total because you've got the quarter inch that's visible, that's visible and then you have the quarter inch that's tucked underneath. 
and then we're gonna just stitch down this and be able to create a lovely little finished off edge. Now, when you're working at a corner like this, there's a really easy way to create a miter. So that way you are not seeing any raw edges anywhere on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first unfold the one eye piece and we can see our folded edges there. And I'm gonna first do my fold up of my quarter inch. And we're gonna do that press down a few inches or so. I just wanna be able to get everything pressed and in place. Then we're gonna flip it up one more time. All right, now when we unfold this, we're seeing a series of lines here. And I'm gonna actually mark this so you guys can see it. So here is our folded edge. That's our second fold. And then we have another one here and here. These are friction gel pens and this is still a little hot, so it is not turning under as best we can. So what we wanna do is have everything meet really well in the center here. So essentially we have to cut off that center in order to make it happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to slice straight across right here, right where these folds are all meeting. And that should allow everything to turn in real nicely and not have any raw edges. So now that allows us to fold in along where this X is. Create that kind of miter right there. All right, so now that I folded that back, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in along that 45 degree line. And I'm gonna fold it in twice to hit my centers like this. And then on the other side as well. And you may have to do some fussing around to make sure that this meets at a nice little miter. But your goal here is to create a nice little point there that we can pin in place. That way we can stitch around and not have any raw edges. All right, so now we're ready to just stitch all the way around here. I'm gonna use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm gonna use thread that is going to match with my outer fabric because it is going to be visible. Now with the wrong side up, I've set my sewing machine to sew an eighth of an inch stitch. And I'm just gonna go all the way around that edge. When you come to those corners, make sure you slow down and that you're able to do any last minute adjustments to make that miter as neat as possible. And then you're gonna stitch until you hit there the miter's meat. And then if you have the able ability to keep your needle down, do that because then you can turn everything and then just keep on stitching. All right, we've got our underskirt completed. We have our nice neat hem on the back so we don't have to line it. We're gonna set this aside for now and we're gonna work on our overskirt. All right, so you should have an overskirt piece that is going to be visible and you should have a lining piece that is just that, it's going to be on the lining. So for this one here, um, this particular fabric, it's not directional, but there are really clear lines to the way every, all the leaves are going. So I definitely did the same fussy cutting that we did for that bib that had the circles. I did the same thing here to make sure that I had a nice straight edge on the bottom. So in the end, it wouldn't look like the leaves are going crooked because we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna open everything up and I'm gonna place these right sides together. We're gonna pin all the way around and we're going to sew along our edges and our bottom, leaving the top edge open for turning. Now, I definitely like to avoid pinning when at all possible, but when I'm gonna be dealing with a piece this large, I'm definitely gonna take the time to pin out my sides. What I like to do is start with those corners, get those in line first, then I'll hit the middle, and then I kinda distribute everything from there to make sure that everything is nice and even. Now, these pieces should be cut to the correct size, so if you are the same size, so if you end up with vast differences, double check your measurements, make sure that you cut them right in the first place because this shouldn't be too challenging to get everything to fit up together. 
All right, so I've got everything pinned together. And one final note before we sew, if you do have a directional fabric, like say the heads all go in one direction, then you want to make sure that that is pointing towards your open top edge. Otherwise, everything is gonna be facing down and you're gonna have to rip out and do this again. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch all the way around the edges, leaving that top open. And we are using a half inch seam allowance for this as we've been doing all along. So this is the edge we're going to eventually be turning. I'm gonna make sure that I reinforce the stitches at the beginning and end so that way they don't rip open when I'm turning everything. All right, I've reached the end. I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce those stitches as well, just so I've got a real nice sturdy seam there. Now, just like on those pockets, you wanna make sure that you are clipping your bottom corners off and pressing them out so they got really nice points. You're not gonna to need to do that for the top. That's gonna to be nice and straight, but make sure you do it here. All right, we're gonna flip everything so that it is right sides out. Now, whenever you have really big, long stitches like this, we're gonna press it all so it's nice and flat but I find that it is helpful to kind of run your finger along it too to kind of train those seams. So I just kind of take it and press it out as I am going. And you know, just any sort of pre-press you can do is always helpful. All right, I'm gonna take the tip of this pen. We're gonna press that out. All right, so we got everything with the right sides facing out. This top part is gonna get caught up in our waistband later, so don't worry about that. But right now we've gotta get everything pressed really well. So since I don't like to use steam in my iron, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna just spritz this edge really good with my spray mister. It's just water in here, nothing fancy. And then I'm gonna take my fingers and I like to press out as much as I can here to make sure that I've got a nice sharp edge and that the fabric isn't rolling to the front or the back. That's important so that it's gonna lay nice and straight when everything is said and done here. And I find that the combination of the spray with the nice hot iron and pressing that seam out with your fingernails gets a really, really nice crisp edge that looks just fantastic. All right, that's looking very good, very straight. Nothing is rolling, it is just meeting nicely on the ends. So I need to do that around my long bottom and my other side piece. All right, it is now time to grab our front panel of our apron and our two pockets so that way we can stitch these on before we assemble the rest of our skirt. This might be a little challenging to see because we have the same dark color pocket as we do the back here. So first I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna find the center. It should be 32 inches wide at this point once we account for our seam allowances. So I'm lining the 16 inch of my six by 24 inch quilting ruler up with the edge. Now the top of the pocket should be four and a half inches down from this upper raw edge. So keeping that 16 inch even with that side, I can move that up to get to my four and a half all the way across. So I know that eventually my pocket is gonna sit even with the bottom of this ruler. Now we're supposed to have 10 inches between our pockets, which means that if this is my center and this is where my top of my pocket should be, the edge of my pocket should sit right at my five inch mark. So this is a really easy way to pin everything, make sure everything's square. We have four and a half lined up with that upper raw edge, 16 lined up at the side so we know we're halfway through. And then at the five inch mark is where the right edge of that pocket is going to sit. So now I can pin this in place. I'm just gonna flip this over just so you can see it super clearly. This is the wrong side, but it'll help you visualize it I think a little bit better. Again, 16 inches here, four and a half on the top, and then five inches in is where the right side of that pocket is going to live. Now I'm gonna turn it back right side up and also make sure remember we had that opening you want to make sure that's on the bottom because we're going to be able to stitch that close when we top stitch this in place 
So keeping everything nice and flat, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this pocket. And I'm gonna pin at the top and bottom of that right side and only at the bottom so far of the left side because we're gonna be turning this down a little bit to create a little decorative element and a nice little pop of color. And we have to measure up on this side to see where that pocket is going to end. All right, so now I'm gonna move my ruler and I'm gonna make it even with the bottom of that pocket. Again, might be a little challenging to see at this point, but we want it to come down like so when we're all done. So this tells me where I need to put my pin so that way I can stop at the correct point when we're sewing these in. So I'm just gonna take my pin right where that three and a half was and then this is my guide. I'm gonna start stitching here. I'm gonna lock my stitches in place. I'm gonna edge stitch around all the way up to the top here and edge stitch that in place. And then in the next step, we're gonna be able to fold that down, put a little button here as a nice decorative element, and then also to help keep that pocket flat folded down. Now, once you get one side done, you have to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm kind of starting like right in the corner here because I want it to be a little free to turn down all the way. So I've set my sewing machine up for an eighth of inch stitch because that's what I've been using throughout this entire process. And I've got that those seams where I sewed three forward and three back to lock everything in place. And then keeping the edge of this pocket in line with the edge of my presser foot at all times, I'm gonna be able to sew some nice top stitching. I chose a nice black thread for this to match the black background. And it's just gonna kind of blend in. That way if it isn't perfect, it won't be super obvious. But we do wanna make it as neat as possible. When you get to that bottom, you're going to, with your needle down, pivot everything and turn it. And now your presser foot should be lined up with that bottom. And remember, we're gonna be catching that opening so that way we don't have to stitch it closed by hand. We're gonna turn one last time and remember when I hit this pin, that's my stopping point because we're gonna be turning this back. We want it to be nice and cute and decorative. Okay, so I've hit my point, so I'm gonna stitch my three back. And actually this one is just going to stay in place. So we'll stitch right in place a few times. And we should be nice and secured at this point. And we're gonna do everything on the other side. So now we're gonna fold this over and put a little button on here. It's going to be purely decorative. And to keep that flap in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin through there as well. That way I'm not fighting with that and the positioning of it. And I'll know that it's gonna look nice when I put it in there. I'm putting my pin a little bit above where I wanna actually sew my button. I think I'm gonna go for right here, right above that point. Just, I think it will look aesthetically well there, but you can pick your own location. All right, so for this next step, you're going to need some hand sewing needles, button, and some thread. I'm just using the same black r thread I've been using for all the top stitching. About an arm length is plenty. Any more than that, and the thread can knot up and you end up with issues with it. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a snip. Now, typically when I'm quilting, I only sew with one thread thickness, but that's not what I wanna do here because we're sewing some buttons on. While they're decorative, we wanna make sure that they're going to also stay in place if there's any strain on them. As you know, you're throwing stuff in them while you're cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and knot that at the bottom with a knot so I have two thread thicknesses that I'm gonna be stitching through. My grandmother, she used to lick her finger like that and then kind of like roll it and pull it down to get like a really secure knot. This is a really fat, ugly knot, but that is, that is the way she always used to do it when she was showing me how to sew when I was little. All right, so remember, we want this pocket to be usable, so make sure that you are not stitching through this back layer. What I am gonna do though to hide this knot is I'm going to start and then just push it through the back here, and then it'll just be hidden underneath that button where you won't see it because it's all 
the thrown together there. So I'm gonna start by just putting my needle through my first one here, kind of decide where I want it to be at this point. The first couple of stitches are important as they kind of determine the placement of your button. I kind of like it in that position. So we're just gonna go ahead and push it through that top button. Push that needle through the back, again, making sure that we are not going through this backing layer. And then I'm gonna come up through those side holes. I went through the up and for bottom first. There we go. It takes a little figure in sometimes. That pulled up. We're gonna go in the other. And you want to do your best to make sure that it's going straight up and down and straight side to side. If you don't, you know, it's not the end of the world. If somebody points that out on, on your apron that you made, you know, they're, they're not your friend. They're the quilt police. We don't, we don't listen to them. But at this point, we've got it nice and situated. It's looking good. I'm gonna go through that two to three more times before I knot off the thread and am gonna call it good. Because remember, this is not, it's not a functional button. It's a decorative button to just help have that little extra pop of color on your pocket. And at this point too, I can remove this pin so we don't poke ourselves because we've got it stitched down, it'll be good to go. All right, so I learned this kind of fun trick. If you take your last stitch and you bring it through the front like that, and you can wrap your threads around a little bit to kind of help secure it just a little more and then stick it through the back And then we can do our final knot and bury it inside. So when you're doing your final knot, if you wrap it around your needle, I'm just gonna do two times here because we have two lengths of thickness and you want that knot to be as close to the edge as possible. If you push it through while pinching it, that makes my knot like real close to the bottom there. It's like right here where my fingernail is. So now I can take this and I can stitch it through the back lining and just bring that needle out a little ways away, give a little pop, and you can almost hear that pop. And now the thread is uh, buried away, you're not gonna see that knot, and it gives a little bit more security too because that knot's not visible, it's not anything that can get caught on, and it just looks really nice. All right, I've gotta do everything now on the other side. All right, our front panel is completely done. The last thing I need to do is mark my center point and actually can kind of see where that is because I can see where the fold used to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin up there. This is gonna be important for many steps coming forward because we have to match our centers to uh, put it with our other skirt panel, the one that's the underskirt. And then we also have to know where it is when we do our gathers and when we attach it to the waist tie. So just keep whatever you do next, you want to keep this middle always pinned there. Like do not remove it, just stitch very carefully over it because we need to know where that middle is at all times until the skirt is completed. All right, so I've got my underskirt now and I can still see the middle there too from where my fold is. If not, you can always just measure the width of it and be halfway through um, is where you're gonna put your pin. That's totally fine as well if you can't see it anymore because you pressed so well. All right, so I'm lining up those top pins right on top of each other and this is so large we can't see the whole thing at once but uh, I'm actually gonna scooch this over a little bit because I wanna make sure that I have equal amounts of the underskirt sticking out on both sides. That's very important coming up. So we've got that together. Ideally, it should be right about even with where those are. So now I'm just gonna take one pin and pin through both of those layers because we're gonna start the process of joining these. Now the pattern tells you to go straight into the basing stitch. I am a fan of first joining them together. That way if your basing stitches come, like your threads break or something, you still at least have them joined and you're working with them as one unit. So I like that to do that first. I'm not gonna do a ton of pins. I just have ones at the edges and that center, which we're gonna leave in basically until we're about ready to be totally done with this. And then I'm just gonna sew an eighth of an inch stitch all the way along the top because I want to just get these together as one piece for the gathering step. So I'm gonna start just a little bit before where everything is joined 
and I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch all the way across the top with that eighth of an inch stitch as it's going to allow us to conceal these stitches within the waistband later. Now the next thing we need to do is sew two lines of gathering stitches. The reason why you want two is because if one breaks when you're doing this, then you've got a backup and you don't have to start from scratch. Now we tried this with RFL thread and while I have successfully gathered quilting cotton with one layer with RFL thread, it was not going very well for this. So we are gonna be using some jeans thread for gathering because we're going through three layers of quilting cotton, it's a little bit stronger thread, you're gonna run it up against less issues issues with breakage when you are use the strongest thread that you have available to you. Now you can purchase gathering feet for your sewing machine if you decide that there are a lot of little girl ruffles or um, aprons in your future, but to do it with just a regular presser foot, we're going to just increase our stitch length to the longest available on your machine. And that's going to get create a very loose stitch that you're going to be able to pull and gather up. So I'm gonna start still with that eighth of an inch stitch because I want this to be, um, again, hidden when we insert this into our waistband later. I'll slow down as I come to that pin so I can keep that in place. All right, now when you stop here, don't use like your thread clip or anything. You just wanna lift your needle up, leave yourself a real nice long tail because we're gonna use that to pull the threads on. All right, I'm gonna move my sewing machine needle back over to a quarter inch. We're using a half inch stitch throughout this entire process. So a quarter inch is gonna give me plenty to be able to hide that in later. So again, leaving that really nice long tail, I'm gonna stitch down close to, but not, not right on that seam from before. You don't really wanna cross them, but next two is great. Now I only replaced the top thread. The bobbin thread is still that RFL. So I'm gonna make sure to grab this blue, blue jeans thread here. And what I like to do is just kind of give it a little tug and then spread those gathers down and it is it is I will tell you a little challenging to get this started to get the gather to go into that pleat there and you just kind of want to work it down and what you can do is you can grab it give it a little bit of a tug and then if you kind of just hold that then you can just smooth the gathers down as you're working this is a good like Netflix opportunity. What you don't want to do is just like be yanking on this thread as you're pulling this way because you will break the thread if you do that. But if you grab the edge, like you kind of wrap this around your finger, grab the edge and kind of smooth those gathers down, then you will be getting a longer and longer thread tail here. You're just going to pull a few more inches each time and spread those down. And I like to use this as my guide so that way I can pull this all the way down. Now, this is going to need to fit within our waistband. So we need to get everything from the, basically the pin to the outer layer down to about nine inches. And we have a ways to go um, to get there, but it's just something that you're gonna continually work at until it gets smaller and smaller. So you can see that these ruffles are coming in some, but this, I haven't even started to get that far yet. But we're making some progress. That's starting to look good. So I think I'm gonna to try to spread these ruffles down some, get more towards that center. All right, so when I get this nice and flat, 
we are currently at about eight and a half inches, which I'm gonna call good at this point. Um, I'll be able to spread that out a little bit when I'm actually inserting it into the waistband, but this is going to be about where I need it to be. And I know that my gathers are going to be nice and even. I'm gonna show you one more thing that will help these lay really nice when you attach your waistband. It's called stroking the pleats or the gathers. So this is not like a must do, like it will still look absolutely great if you, if you don't do this step. Um, but when you have all of these, what you can do is you can just take your needle and kind of run it through your pin rather. And it kind of just gets everything laying nice and flat. So it's like this one in particular is looking kind of lumpy and bumpy. But if we can stroke it, then it kind of gets everything going the direction you want it to and it'll just look a little neater. Now this definitely takes a little bit more time to do. Um, so if you just have had a really rough go of it to this point, um, you can totally skip it and it'll look okay. All right, now it's time to scrunch down the other side. So this is why you have two threads. I just broke one. So thankfully I've got one up here. So I know to slow down and I can work it this way now and I don't have to start from scratch. So that is a very important thing when you are gathering. All right, so I've got it down to eight inches from center when I spread this out, about eight and a half again. So again, I'm gonna call that good for right now. I'm gonna have to spread it out a little bit when we go to join the waistband, but this is, this is good enough. And I actually, at first, I was thinking the stroking really didn't do too much good, but you can really see a difference in the way that these pleats are laying versus the way that these pleats are laying. So I do think it is worth the time to kind of just go through and just with your, pin, go through them, and just get them to lay, if anything, down a little bit. You know, sometimes you do this and you just get a clump that just likes to pop up and it just isn't that attractive in the end product. Um, this really kind of helps that just do what it's supposed to do and lay the way you want it to. Because, you know, this is not, you know, this, this project takes a little bit of effort and it is an adorable apron when it's all done be a nice heirloom one. I have an apron that my great grandmother made and that she hand pleated herself on gingham. So if you take some time with this, like this could be something that gets passed down and that people know that you made lovingly and you are really, they love and cherish. So this is looking a lot better. It's looking a lot smoother. We're ready to move on to our waistband. There is one tiny thing, and this is just, you know, my personal preference. First of all, I'm gonna leave these long thread tails from the gathering in place, just in case I have to do anything. But I ended up getting a lot of little fuzzies from the threads. Um, just tugging at this, the, the fabrics are gonna just unravel some, and that's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, but I wanna just give them a trim so that I don't have that threaded gobbly mess all over the place. All right, so we're gonna set this to the side for now. We're gonna come back to it once we get our um, ties on and are ready to assemble our waistband. So if you have a seam gauge that can be really helpful at this point, what you're gonna do is set it to half of an inch. That way we can really easily go around the edges and make sure that we are pressing in half of an inch. So we're gonna take our P7, which are our neckties, and we're gonna go along around the long edges and press those in half an inch. So you can take your seam guide, take a look, see I'm okay, I'm a little over there, and line that up. Okay, so that's good. So we're gonna start off this little bit, get that corner down. Then, so you're not like going the entire route. What I like to do is spread it down and I'm about six inches down, that's looking good. I can also tell because this is a striped fabric and I made sure to cut that so that it would be nice and straight when I was fussy cutting that. Um, 
that the stripes are kind of folding over right on top of each other. So I know I've done that correctly. So now I've got my two reference points here and here that I pressed. So now I'm able to just press in between that. So I'm just gonna work my way down both sides of the strip doing that, you know, checking my seam every six inches or so to make sure that I'm pressing in exactly half an inch. And that way I'm gonna have two sides that measure the same and that they look symmetrical when we attach them to the sides of our apron bib. Now that I've got both sides pressed in along that half inch mark, now we're gonna fold them right sides together, matching up those edges. And because I've got that stripe panel, I'm gonna make sure that I'm matching all of my stripes. I'm actually gonna turn it this way so I can see that a little better. Make sure that they are right on top of each other from top to bottom and just align all those edges all the way down. Now this is probably an instance where I'm gonna take my spray mister and I'm just gonna give the whole thing just a little bit of moisture. That way I can help make sure that these um, presses that I'm putting in are gonna stay nice and crisp. As I'm working with them, it'll help everything stay together and it also will help it look nice and look better over time as well. All right, we've got one more thing to do before we're ready to attach this to the sides of our apron bib. So we're gonna unfold this and on one side only, we're gonna fold this in to create the finished edge of the top of our ties that'll go behind our neck. Now for this side, we are only need to fold in a quarter inch and to be honest, it's not gonna be super critical if you aren't exactly at a quarter uh, because it's gonna be at the back. No one's gonna care if it's, if it's a little off. Uh, but what you can do now is when you fold this back in and on top of each other, we're gonna be able to give it one more press and that will conceal all of our raw edges so that everything will look fantastic as you wear your apron. Now, of course, we've got two ties, so I have to do all that again, and so do you. All right, so now it's time to attach our straps to the side of our bib. Now, we wanna make sure that the folded over edge that's going to be at the top, because that is our finished edge, our raw edge is gonna be even with the bottom, because that's gonna get caught up in our waistband a little bit later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up, and that fold line right there, that's where we're going to place our edge of our bib piece. Now keep in mind, this is not a straight piece. It is a curved in to go with the lines of your body because we get a little narrower up here. And so it's not gonna be like perfectly flat at the bottom, but to make sure that you get it nice and lined up as well as you can, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the bottom of this point is even with the bottom of my raw edge here. So once that's all in place, you can go ahead and fold it over and get everything pinned in place. Now when you're pinning, make sure that you are getting all of the sides. We wanna make sure that they're kind of even with each other. That way the top stitching looks good from both sides when we go over this. Now if you wanted to pin all the way up, you could. Um, the only thing I'm going to pin is this top bit here because I wanna make sure that all those little raw edges are kind of tucked in there and that everything stays the way it should be. And I'm just gonna put a pin in there to kind of keep that in place. Now, everything else, I mean, you certainly could pin, especially if you are worried about like, you have stripes like this, you're worried about them coming apart. But this part, I'm not so worried about. I'm mostly worried about this section because we wanna make sure that that bib is going all the way out to the fold. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side, and then we're ready to top stitch. One last thing you might wanna do before you go put this on is just kind of feel with your fingers to make sure you feel like the bottom of this is about in the same spot as the top because we wanna make sure as we do our top stitching that we are gonna catch both of those layers and not have a little bit flapping out in no man's land underneath because we couldn't see it when we were sewing and we got it out of alignment. All right, so I've changed my thread back to the black, which matches this really well and coordinates. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to that eighth of an inch stitch I've been using to top stitch. You could also use an edge stitching foot for this in order to get really close to the edge of this, or you also could use a quarter inch stitch that has a guide on the end. I'm just going to line everything up with the edge of my presser foot and be go slow and steady to make sure everything looks really nice. 
So I'm gonna set up again to that eighth of an inch stitch and I'm gonna increase my stitch length to 3.0. This is holding everything together, but it is also decorative. So you don't need it to be as tiny as say a piecing stitch for quilting. All right, so I'm just gonna start down here, remove my pins as I come to them and stitch all the way up that strap. So I'm gonna say it one more time. When you see my hand back here, I'm not tugging on this fabric. I'm just helping guide it because we've got a lot of layers here. I'm just trying to make sure that everything stays put and feeds nice and evenly through my sewing machine. All right, we're coming to that tip. So I'm sewing all the way to the edge and then with my needle down, I'm gonna turn and stitch across the edge here. Now, since this is the end, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I backstitch because this is an area that's gonna get a lot of kind of use and abuse because this is where we're gonna be tying it behind our neck. We wanna make sure that it's really secure. Now we need to do the same thing for the other side. The difference is, is in order to keep it even with the edge of my foot, I'm gonna to need to start on the strap this time. So I'm gonna to need to backstitch to start. Turn that corner first and then work my way down the strap to the bib. All right, we've got our bib on with our ties. We're doing pretty good. We are ready to start making our waistband now that we can join everything together. One quick thing I'm gonna do here, just because this wasn't straight, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little trim. That way I'm dealing with something that is nice and straight across a little bit later when we go to attach these, I want this to be a nice straight line. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside with my skirt for now while we get our waistband together. So at this point, we should have four piece eights and two piece nines. These piece eights are folded over. This is what's going to go around your back to tie. And the piece nine, that's the one that's gonna go right around our stomachs. And we wanna put a little bit of inner facing on the part that's going to be facing out to give it the same stability that that bib apron has. So just like before, we wanna iron it with the glue side of the inner facing facing up, but I want to align it with it facing down. That way I can get everything lined up but I won't run the risk of accidentally getting the fusible on my iron. So I've got the wrong side of the fabric facing up here and I'm going to put the fusible side or that bumpy shiny side face down, making sure to align it pretty much dead center with everything here. We should have about a half inch for that seam allowance going around on all sides. Now, if it's not perfect, it certainly is not the end of the world. But what I'm gonna do is grab that with my fingers and flip it over and then just kind of feel to make sure that it stayed in place and it did pretty well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fuse that. Follow your manufacturer's instructions for fusing, but usually you just need to keep the iron down for a few sections and you kind of want to slowly move it from one section to another. You're not ironing a shirt here. You're trying to just get it fused nice and flat down. I like to go over kind of a second time usually. Then when you're all done, you can flip it over and you can kind of like scratch at it. And if anything comes up or you kind of see any bubbles, that means that it didn't quite fuse in that spot. And we've got a little bit more work to do with that iron to get it ready. All right, so now we've got our waist seam that's gonna be for the back and that has no interfacing. And we have our one that's gonna be the, for the front and that has a little bit more stability with that interfacing. Now we're gonna take two pieces uh, that are going to be the waist ties and we are gonna stitch those along the short edges here. And we're gonna do that for both of these pieces for the front and the back. This is going to create uh, basically the front and the back of the waist tie. So the first thing we're gonna just do is just feed a bunch of these guys through the sewing machine with that half inch stitch. We're back to that again. And we're just going to uh, get these all together here. So we now have two really long waistband straps with our smaller center piece in the center and then the longer ties for the back on the sides. We're gonna press these seams open and then we're ready to assemble 
and sew together the edges of that waistband. We're almost there. We're about ready to put this all together. So now we need to pin these together. And I definitely read the pattern instructions several times before I attempted to do this to make sure I understood every single aspect of how we're going to get the skirt and the apron bib in here. So between looking at that closely and watching this video, you should be able to execute this with no problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these guys right sides together and we've got our straps here. And we, at this point, do not want to sew at all in this middle section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line them up that way they'll be lined up for later when we are gonna sew them. But we actually aren't gonna sew within that area at all right now. We're actually gonna start sewing about two inches beyond that. But I do wanna get them pinned together, that way I know later everything is gonna look pretty good. But I'm not gonna pin at all within here because I want to have that assurance to myself that no Stephanie, it's not time to pin or sew in there just yet. So just like when we did the pocket and we put a pin at that three and a half inch mark so we knew not to sew over it so the pocket could kind of fold down. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put a stop pin. So we're gonna put pins on both sides here about two inches beyond where that seam is. This is where we're not gonna sew beyond when we stitch the edges of our tie together. So we're gonna stitch all the way around this tie starting and stopping at these pins, leaving this area completely undone, and then do the same thing on the other side. That way we're gonna be able to turn the outside of the waistbands, leaving this free to insert our bib and our skirt. Now this is just a, a real nice straight seam, so I'm really just gonna pin uh, just a teeny bit on these, cause it shouldn't be too difficult to get everything sewn together and then not have anything shift on us. Then we've gotta repeat everything on the other side. All right, so here's the seam of that waistband. That's the section we're not gonna sew yet. So I'm gonna start where I put those pins. Now, this is kind of arbitrary. You just kind of need to leave about a uh, two inches of space so that way you have room to turn everything and get everything inserted. Now we're gonna sew that quarter inch seam or half inch seam. And I'm gonna reinforce those stitches because since we are gonna turn, I don't wanna rip them and have them come out. Once you hit a half inch, make sure you go ahead and leave that needle down and turn everything to the side. Then you can start stitching down to pivot on the other side. All right, so I've reached that warning pin that I'm two inches away from where this seam is. So that's where I'm gonna take everything out. I'm gonna reinforce those stitches and that's where I'm gonna stop on this part of that waist tie. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these pins out because we've got a lot of fussing to do. I don't wanna stab myself. They were just there to help make sure that those were gonna line up perfectly when we were all said and done. So just like what we worked on the pockets, the next thing we wanna do is clip off those corners. So that way when we turn everything right sides out, we have a really nice um, point there. And you wanna clip close to the stitching line, but not through it. Do that for both sides. All right, so now we're gonna take this opening and we're going to pull this whole bit out. This is gonna take some doing. You kinda of got a lot to push through there, but it's doable. Once you kinda of get it started like that, it's kinda of easiest to kinda of stick your fingers in and hold from the back and pull. There are also tools that make this easier. If you see a lot of these in your future, you can get a tube turner and that will be helpful. So 
So obviously this thing is, is much longer than my pointy utensil, my pencil that I've been using, but I can easily drop it in and get it back out. So what I did is just push it all the way down to the tip and then I can still work it to push that corner out gently. Do the same thing on that other side. So I've got a nice pointy corner. Then I can just drop her back out. So if you've got something that's short and pointy, uh, like they make tools that are actually point pushers, but this mechanical pencil also has worked really well for me for this project. All right, I gotta do the other side, then we're gonna press. So the center waist part that we have not done anything to, we do not wanna turn that right sides out. We don't wanna press it. We just wanna just pretend it, we didn't do anything to it so far. But we do wanna press these ties and get them ready for a little bit later. So I'm gonna go through and spritz both sides with my spray mister. That way it'll hold that press really nicely. And I'm just gonna go through this one half at a time using my fingernails to press that seam all the way out to the edge. That way that join, that seam, is gonna be right on the edges and not roll to the front or back. I'm just gonna take my time doing that one side at a time. All right, this is where I stop sewing. It's open from here on out, so I'm not gonna press any more of that. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna now press this side and then repeat everything with the other half of the tie. All right, so I finished pressing my ties, but we want to make sure that these guys here are still right sides together. So our ties are gonna kind of be hanging out, looking a little, a little weird right now. And there's one more thing we need to do here. We need to make sure that the interfacing side is facing up because we want that to end up right sides together with the front of our skirt here. That way we have that extra stability in the front of the apron. So remember we kept this pin in the center because that way we can align our centers here. So what I'm gonna do is just take my edges here and fold it over so that those seams meet in the center. And then I'm able to just kind of press that over, figure out where my center is. And I can put a little pin in here as well. And that's gonna tell me where my center is. So we're pretty good in that situation. All right, so now this is a part that I read a few times before I did it. So make sure you read it, make sure you understand it when you're looking through your instructions, which again, you can get from an SIY retailer at SIYSewItYourself.com. There are local quilt shops you can go to as well as online retailers that you can get the pattern from. And you also can get it at SewForHome.com. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put this inside and pin it all together and then stitch across this top edge. All right, so what we wanna do is slide this in and these top edges here, they've got to meet. So I've got my center and my center, and I want those to be right on top of each other. So I'm gonna pin right there through both of them. And then I also wanna find my center for the back here. And I can see my fold mark. We can create it here real easily. I'm just gonna fold that in half. We got it pinched so I can take a pin that isn't holding everything together and mark that. So now I know that this is going to go against the wrong side of that underskirt. So now I can line those up. And now I know that I have everything pinned through all three layers. That's really important. And I've got my centers matched through all three layers. Now next I'm gonna work my way out to the sides here because this edge here the underskirt lining, that should be even with where our seam allowance is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to pin that in place right there. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. So now we can grasp these edges and kind of start to spread this out a little bit. This is where it's a little easier to come in a little too much when you do your gathers than go in too far. And I actually just broke a thread there, which is not good. So I'm gonna have to manually kind of pin this in, trying to keep hold of the gathers. And this is why, again, you got two threads because if one breaks, then the other should kind of hopefully hold everything in place. 
as you get working on that. So that way you can have a nice even look. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just pinning all these top edges together. So I'm hitting the top waistband that has the interfacing and I've got my skirt and then I've got my bottom edge of that waistband too. So we're going to just work on pinning this in and getting it in place. All right, so this is where my threads just broke. So rather than go through and do all that again, I'm just gonna pin a whole lot and kind of recreate those gathers myself. It won't look as good as the parts where it is fully gathered in, but it's gonna be a small area, so I think I can make it look decent and it won't be too noticeable that it's off. But definitely be careful as you're working in this step. You don't wanna undo all your work that you did with your gathers. All right, this time I'm going to more gently smooth those gathers over to give myself a little bit more room. I need that extra half inch so that I came in too far on. That is looking much better. All right, I've got everything pinned. Just to recap, we've got our waistband with the interfacing on top with the right edge facing the front side of our skirt. And then our skirt lining is lined up with the edge here. And then we have our back on the back there. So when everything is stitched together, this is gonna stitch straight up and we're gonna be good to go there. And one thing that I noticed, so I've done a lot of ruffling and gathering because I make little dresses for my daughters all the time with quilting cotton. And this method of doing that stroking, this is the first time I've done it with quilting cotton, it really makes everything lay nice and straight across here. So I don't know if you guys have ever done this before where it's like constantly like poking out of the side and you know you're losing like length by doing that. This really makes it lay super nice and flat. So I'm interested to see how well this looks when we stitch it out because I'm, I'm really quite pleased with how it's behaving at this point. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to stitch, I'm gonna start a little bit before and end a little bit after where these uh, waistbands are. Um, I'm not gonna be able to go too far beyond because it, of this weird turny thing that's going on right now, but just enough to where we can enclose all of these raw edges and be able to press that up. Now, when you do this, you do wanna make sure that your ties are very far out of the way so that you don't accidentally uh, stitch them in because that would be no, no fun at all. I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch to get started just so that's nice and secure. And then we're gonna start going over. I'm gonna remove all the pins as I come to them. I really don't wanna stitch over them. I've had a pin break on me before and it like, the needle like went straight towards my eye and thankfully the thread was still on it so it stopped before it made it that far but I will never do it again. All right, I've reached beyond that so I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch before I take this off. All right guys, this is kind of our moment of truth to see how those ruffles went. We're gonna pull that up and oh, that looks good. I am really pleased with how this turned out. So. This is a side where I had that basing stitch break and I kind of like repinned everything to like mimic the ruffle. And this is the side where everything worked out just fine. So this one looks really great. Those ruffles are really neat and tidy, kind of going across are all like evenly spaced in a nice tiny way. This one, you can tell that it's not quite the same. Um, this is where it was doing just fine. And this from here, like here to here is where my thread broke and I kind of made it work. So we ended up with a, a big chunk right here, which isn't super ideal, but you know what? It'll look fine in the end. It, it's evenly distributed when we put everything together. So I'm calling, I'm calling this good. I'm gonna give it a press and then we are ready to move on to adding our bib and finishing this. I try not to press the ruffles down too much. I really want them to kind of have body. So I'm just kind of like hitting that top area some. So once you have your waistband pressed out, there's a couple other areas we need to press to get ready to finish this entire thing. So remember we left a little opening here. So these edges really just kind of want to fold in. So you just wanna kind of press them in place, help them stay there. So that way we can top stitch that later and have it look great. 
There's also going to be an opening on the other side that to do the same thing with. Now I'm gonna grab my seam gauge again because I need to open up this waistband and I need to press it in half an inch as well all the way across the top. That way we can insert our bib in the top and just top stitch across this entire waistband and we're done. I'm gonna kind of start in the center I think here. On the interfacing side, you kind of get away with not measuring because the interfacing should end a half inch away from the edge of that fabric. So you can just fold it over to meet the edge of the interfacing and give it a press. All right, we've now reached our final step where we're going to insert our bib lining with our center here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my center just by folding this over and I'm gonna put a pin where that is, just so I've got a nice line to go for. And then I'm also, again, gonna find my seams where my waistbands end. I'm gonna fold that over so I can get my center waistband as well. So that is going to go right here. Now, matching those two areas up, I'm actually gonna take another pin because this is gonna insert in here, but I still wanna be able to see that I'm on center. So I'm actually just gonna put a pin going straight up and down here. That way I can see that I'm on center, but I'm not sticking a pin like in the middle of everything. That will be in the way when we sew. So what we wanna do when we insert this is have the bottom of our bib meet up with the top of where our seam allowance is for all of these gathered stitches. So I'm gonna line that up just like this so that it really is like just touching right there. And then when I pull that up, I can scoot it over a little bit so that way I am making sure that I'm meeting center like that. So now I'm gonna take that pin and I'm gonna pin through all the layers. So I went through my waistband front, my apron, and also my waistband back. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the edges here. Make sure everything is nice and lined up. Make sure my tops are meeting at about the same spot here. That feels pretty good. You wanna make sure that these waistband edges are at the same spot because they're gonna to need to, just like when we did our, our upper straps where they need to meet, they also need to meet here as well. So now let's do the same thing over here and pin through all those layers. Now I'm gonna hit a couple other strategic points as we pin this section here. Now remember we don't have too much because we have this whole section pinned already, but I do wanna make sure that my seams are gonna meet pretty well right here where that upper waistband is. And same thing on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna top stitch around the entirety of our strap. We're gonna go all the way down, turn at the edge, and then make our way all the way back until we meet at the center. And what that's gonna do is it's going to enclose any raw edges that we have left here on the sides, as well as attach our bib to the skirt and waistband. And then we're done and we get to try this baby on. And whatever stitch you've been using for top stitching, you wanna to switch to that. Same if you've been using like the same thread color for this whole section. Now I'm gonna start just a little bit before where I stop stitching on that waistband. That way it's in a little bit of an inconspicuous spot because I am gonna to have to sew over that when we're all done. I don't really want it to be front and center. So I'm really just gonna take my time and it helps, this is pretty heavy at this point. We have a lot of yardage in this, We've got some interfacing and it's very dense at that skirt. So take some time, get the weight of the apron as much as you can on your table. And just as you're going through this top part, getting everything pinned together, making sure that you can feel underneath that everything is folded under the way it should be and that you're catching all your pieces. 
All right, I made it through all the parts that needed to be closed up, except for the tiny little holes back here, but that's just really small. So at this point, I can kind of rock and roll going around the edges. Again, just making sure that I am keeping in line with the edge of that presser foot. All right, so I've made it all the way around. I've done a little back stitching just to tack that in place, and we're ready to take a peek at this. All right, so this apron is looking really adorable. I love how it's looking from the front. We do have to check one thing from the back though, and I know that I need to do a little adjustment. So depending on how good of a job you did at following your half inch, you may not have caught your entire background here. I, I did not with mine. So what I like to do whenever I'm doing dresses for my daughters is when I have something like this to do, I like to stitch that down by hand. It really, I think, adds a nice little touch and then you know everything is gonna be placed right where you want it to be. Um, other options, if you don't wanna do that, is you could pick it out, repin, and redo that section. You could take another stitch going around everything, this time coming in a little bit more, and you might hit that more. But I'm just gonna stitch it by hand and call it a day, and it won't take very long at all. So when I'm stitching something like this down by hand, I use pretty much the exact same uh, stitches that I would if I'm sewing quilt binding. So what I'm gonna do to start is just go ahead and take my needle and I'm gonna bring it up through the fold back here a little bit because I, I did catch it at the beginning but not all the way through. So I wanna bring it up through the fold. That way my knot can be hidden underneath everything. And my extra little bit of thread that comes off of there. So now I can just take this and I can hold this section and I can put my needle in right where it came out, where that thread came out. And I'm putting my needle through so that it's coming through the lining fabric and the uh, waistband, but I can't see it from the front. That's really important. We do not want to see this from the front at all. And you can just keep on stitching this way until you make it across. And I've got some milliners here, or some betweens would have been better to work with. They're a little bit smaller, but you're just going to keep on stitching like that really feeling every single time you take that stitch to make sure that it's not coming through from the other side. And you can even see like, even though I'm using black thread here and none of the fabric is black, you cannot see it. Um, if you do this stitch well, it is going to be pretty invisible when everything is said and done. All right, I've gotten all the way to the end, so I'm just gonna finish that up with a quilter's knot so I can bury it within that waistband, and then no one will ever be able to tell that I messed that up just a smidgen as I was working on it. That's like half of sewing, is knowing when you make a mistake, how do I fix that and have it still look good but not have to take everything apart. So that is a very valuable skill to master. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed making the bib and double skirt patched pocket apron. The pattern is available from SIY retailers. You can find it one near you or an online retailer if there isn't one near you at SIYSewItYourself.com. While you're there, make sure to check out all of their ideas for different sewing projects that you can do. So that way you can improve your sewing skills and sew it yourself. You also can get the pattern and a bunch of other tutorials from sewforhome.com, they're the ones who designed this. But make sure, and you can get obviously fabric from your stash, you can get fabric from anywhere, but do try to support an SIY sponsored company. They are from the Jaftex family, that's Free Spirit Fabrics, Henry Glass, Blank, and Studio E. They are the ones that are putting together kits uh, using their fabrics, so that way you can get an idea and know that it's gonna look good when it's done. If you like the way it looks in the picture, 
you are gonna be able to make it look good on you as well because you know what fabrics to use, where to put them, all the good things. And I think that this is just such a fun project. And really, I've said it before, an apron can be an heirloom project. I have an apron that I received from my mom that was my great grandmother's that she hand smocked using gingham fabric. And she gave that to me when I got my first house. And I still use that today. It's like my special occasion apron. If I'm cooking a big dinner and it's fancy, that is the one that comes out. And I gave my mom an apron several years ago when I first learned to sew. She still uses that every Christmas when she's baking, baking cookies. So this is a really practical item but it also can be an heirloom item because it's the one that, you know, great grandma always used or grandma always used when she was baking cookies and, or someone made it for me and my colors to match my kitchen. And so I'm gonna use that all the time. And so this is really a fun project. It's adorable and like very much 1950s housewife vibes from this project because it is flouncy. You've got the ruffled skirt. You have the patch pockets with the little detailing here with the button and the fold down pocket. And you have the opportunity to show off a lot of really fun fabric. So make sure you check it out. Grab your fabric from a Jaftex member company to say thanks for the ideas and all of the instruction that goes along with that. All right, well, thank you for following along. We've got more on the way for you. And until next time, happy quilting.